Hello, discrete math fans. Today we're going to talk about a new kind of proof. These are called combinatorial proofs. So a combinatorial proof is usually used to prove an identity. And we've seen a couple of these, like Pascal's identity or the binomial theorem. Now there are two types of combinatorial proofs. There's double counting proofs and bijective proofs. And for now, we're probably going to see a lot more double counting proofs than bijective proofs. In a double counting proof, what we're going to do is create a set and count it in two completely different ways. That is, we'll take two different perspectives in counting the set. That will yield two different expressions in the identity. The two expressions count the same objects. That means they must be equal to each other. In a bijective proof, we take two sets that are counted by two different expressions in the identity. They are proved to have the same size by finding a bijection between the two sets. Since the two expressions count objects with the same number of elements, they must be equal to each other. As I said before, we're mostly going to see double counting proofs. Let's go over the structure of a double counting proof. So the first thing we'll do is pose a question that has a combinatorial answer. And the usual thing we'll do is we'll just ask a question, and this usually starts how many ways then we have some question there that we ask. Then we give an answer that gives us an expression. And we give a second answer. That second answer gives us a new expression. And we'll finish by concluding that those two expressions are the same because they're counting the same set. They're just doing it in a different way. All right, let's go ahead and see an example of a double counting proof. So you'll remember this. This was the left-right symmetry of Pascal's triangle. For any n and k and the whole numbers with n bigger than or equal to k, n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k. And we proved it before using our formula for binomial coefficients. We're now going to do this in an entirely different way. So our proof before was algebraic. And remember at the time we said we're going to do it the right way. And in this context, I'd like to say that the combinatorial proof is the right way. All right, so here's the proof. Let's take a class of n students, and we'll choose a committee of k students. How many ways are there of doing that? So we'll answer this question in two different ways. Our first answer is, it's just n choose k. That's just the definition of how many ways there are of choosing a committee. In our second answer, we're going to take a different perspective. Instead of counting the number of ways of selecting the students on the committee, let's count the number of ways of selecting the students who will not be on the committee. If there are k students on the committee, that means there will be n minus k people not on the committee. That means there are going to be n choose n minus k ways of choosing the non-committee members. So when you choose a committee, it's just as good to choose the committee members as it is to choose the non-committee members. Therefore, n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k. All right, that's a beautiful proof. Okay, that's all for now.